Kitchen. And I'm Trish, and I'm not. Uh, welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Because Trish is dying to know. I am. Hello. Hi, guys. How Hello. are you? Hi, Trish. Hi, Tracy. How are you doing? Good, but I'm a little bit concerned about what you've got in front of me. <laughs> so We're talking trocars today. We are. Actually, I just had a thought. Oh, Cal. Where's Cal? <laughs> Cal's having a rest. Cal's on holidays. Is he chilling out? Yeah, Cal decided to wait until the Christmas break was over because he doesn't like going to resorts with lots of little children. And so now that the kids are going back to school, he's decided to take off for a couple of weeks. Yeah, and you know, he needs some sun on them bones. Yeah. He's <laughs> doing a bit of bleaching. Oh, you're funny. Uh-huh. Okay, so today we're talking trocars. Yes. For aspirating. Yes. Right, let's go. Let's What's aspirating, go. Trace? Okay, so aspirating is basically when we um, get our cysts in and the tummy is distended, which I mean is bloated and full of gas and fluid, uh, they will deteriorate very quickly and decompose very quickly and we need to stop that um, and preserve them for a little bit. So this is called, um, where we aspirate, we cover the embalm, so it's a very, um, We've talked about embalming before, which is a full embalm in the temporary preserve. This is just really basically embalming the cavity area, um, and that's all. It's just the cavity area. The reason we have to embalm the cavity area is because after we aspirate, we've moved bacteria around in that area and damaged some of the organs. So that bacteria is now going, Whoa, this is great, and I've been pushed around and going to multiply. Take, yeah, multiply and, yep. take, and do my job. and. Yeah. And we're going to do it fast, so we need to preserve that with a chemical, um, and it's usually just for a few days. So. Okay, so hang on, in this situation, we could either be in a situation where the person has had an autopsy and their organs have been removed? Or um, no, if it's, a, if it's an autopsy, it'll be fully involved. Okay, mm -hmm. always. And that's why I'm going to use this little device. Right. So when you have a full autopsy, mm -hmm. um, in an autopsy, if people don't know, when the pathologists have done their uh, autopsy, they'll remove all the organs, and it's called the viscera. And we've talked about this before, so I'll point to the video on the viscera. So there. the viscera is taken out. It's placed in an, uh, a device to be embalmed into a container where it's embalmed out of the way. So we have an empty cavity. Basically, the body is empty of all its organs. So when we embalm, which is still through the the femoral arteries, the carotid arteries, and all the other arteries. The um, cavity is empty, so where the um, organs are being cut, that embalming fluid is going to fill the cavity. Right. Okay, so that's when this is used. This um, will be attached to this tube, mm -hmm. as opposed to this large one. And that's attached, and if you can see, I'll try and get close there. See that it's got um, little slits in, mm -hmm. so basically, that's to stop sucking any bits of um, tissue and um, that's loose in the body, you know, any it's fleshy stuff, anything that's loose. So it basically just sucks liquid and the rest sticks on there, right? So it's like a sieve, basically, it is like a sieve. So all it's doing is sucking the fluid because when you are embalming and you're embalming with a chemical that's quite. Well, it's quite nasty. We need to enter the cavity because it's the fluid sitting in the cavity, and so that fumes, fumes come out. just burning up. So fumes. we need to use this all the way through an uh, a full autopsy embalm. So that is the uh, autopsy embalm aspirating uh, device there, that instrument there. Right. So back to a normal aspiration. So this one is this. Device here. Yeah. So can I just sorry interject? We're back to a case where someone's just bloating. They've come in. Yeah. There hasn't been an, an autopsy. Scrap everything we've said so far. Yeah. They've just got a distended tummy that's full of gas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to uh, we're going to aspirate. So I'm going to demonstrate on Trish. Stand up. Oh. So we got the belly button. I'm not going to take a close on the here. And I'll make an incision here. Okay. And I'll make an incision with a scalpel where once I've made the incision, this is going to go in to that section of the body and it's going to go up like this. How far? It goes right up to the tubuoid box 
Okay, we're going to um, each quarter of the uh, top of the body. So you do it systematically? We do. We'll do the top quarter first where we'll drain all the fluid and blood from there. Um, we'll also go into the heart, which is draining most of the blood. That's a heart, heart tap, so I learned last week. That's a heart tap when we do a TP preserve, yeah? Mm -hmm. So we will, the trocar is going in this far direction. So you're basically, show me how you do it, like what's okay, the motion? So the motion's going to be, so Trish is on the table here, and we're going to go in like this. And the machine is switched on and it sucks. It's a bit like when you have liposuction. It's basically what it is. It's like a liposuction machine. So it's pulling out, it's drawing out fluid, and it's bringing it out. And again, it has little holes in here. A bit similar to that. So what it's doing is not pulling out any bits. You know that it's just broken. Liquid. It's just all liquid that's coming out. So we're going in like this. Do you have to be careful that you don't go too far? Yeah, you've got to be careful because we've got a very sharp edge on here. We don't want to be pushing straight back so we're coming out of any sides of the uh, body. But you've got to be very careful. And it is quite an invasive procedure. Do you, do you think? Yeah, it's not, I'm not, it's not my favourite part of um, my work, but it, it has to be done. It really does have to be done. But it's uh, but you can still take your time and be careful. Um, you don't want to go, ooh, you want to be just doing your general uh, problem with this in a sucking this out. And once we've done the whole top cavity area, we're then gonna turn the troll car around and we're gonna go down and do the bottom half of the cavity area here. So there we're gonna puncture probably the bowel area. Right. Which will smell. Does that already get sucked up through there it as well? It gets all sucked up through there, yeah. Okay. So, and usually when you make your incision, if the tummy is distended, you might get a bit of fluid that comes out and the uh, gas will come out. You have to be masked up because the gas can smell really bad and uh, obviously you need to be covered. So, so once we've done the top half, we'll do the bottom half. But in between doing the top and the bottom, I will clean the trocar in a bleach chemical because I don't want to go and move the bacteria from the bottom to the top. So the reason we do the top first and not the bottom is because the bacteria usually set, starts down at the bottom here, down in this corner. Yeah. Okay, so if I was to start the aspirate here, and I'm going to push all that bacteria up here. So the reason is we start at the top, do all that area before going down there, so it's less chance of pushing that bacteria through the top half of the body. So we minimalizing the movement of bacteria in the body. Cool. So that's why we do that. And then got my instrument, hold the thought, hold the thought. When we have aspirated, when we've done the whole aspirate, the tummy's gone down, all the, as much fluid's come out as possible and the tube is now empty and there's nothing else coming out. We've now pretty much moved all that bacteria around, so now we're going to do the embalming part. Uh, which I say is just with uh, usually one or two bottles of chemicals, depends on the size of the person. And this is something that can be done by morticians, it doesn't yes. have to be done by an embalmer. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, morticians will be taught and how to do this. You don't have to embalm to know how to, to be trained to do your uh, cavity embalming. Right. So we've done all that. that, we've finished with that. So now we're going to go into this instrument here, which is exactly the same as that. Look, but but it's free and it's got that where with my cavity fluid we will pop on there. Has it got a trigger? It hasn't got a trigger. How does it work? So it's got a hole. If I show you there, it's got a hole here. Yeah. So when you put your finger on the hole, it'll stop that fluid from coming out when you turn it upside down. Oh. Because we're going to turn it upside down. I'm not going to do that because the fluid's going to come out. So we're going to turn it around the other way and put it into oh. that little hole. Yep. And we're going to drain all of that fluid to the top. Half the bottle's going to go in there. Or it depends if you're bigger, we'll put a full bottle in here and then another bottle and then half down on the bottom. So we'll turn it around. So basically, this gun would look like a gun. 
is exactly the same. It's got the trocar the same, the fluid's attached to the end, and it just pours in. And that's, so basically that's how you do your cavity embalming. Oh, cool. Just by that. Awesome, so it's quite simple. It's interesting, isn't it? It's very violent to think of somebody doing that, but obviously it's just one of those behind the scenes things that has to happen. So here's another um, instrument. And uh, where do you write your interest? Where do you think oh. we're gonna put this tool when we attach it? When we take this big one off and we attach it to the tube, where's this gonna go? Up my nose. And where else? Down my mouth. Yep, it is. See, I listen to what yeah, you say. You don't think I do, but I do. So this one's just the smaller. It's exactly the same as this. It's not pointy a, though. It's not rounded. Right. It's got a smooth end on because yes, this is going to go up the nostrils and it's going to go down the throat. It is cleaned from the nose to the mouth. Yeah, we don't go into the nose and straight into the mouth. We'll clean in between with a disinfectant before we go down. Yeah. And because a lot of the times when your tummy is distended and you're full of fluid, you get what we call purge, which is all the fluid that comes out of the mouth and the nose. And we need to clean that out. And even though we've aspirated with the um, big trocar, it still sits there, you know, we need to get it out and clear it out because that will stop bacteria. And I would assume that motion might even push some of it yeah, further up. It will, yeah, it will. And also when you do an embalm, sometimes you've got so much fluid in that the body will purge because of the, the pressure of the fluid being pushed and all, everything being moved. So normally you would aspirate using the nasal aspirator, which is this little device here. So that's your nasal aspirator. So these are the collection of instruments for aspirate. There you go. There's a lot of them. It's all in a day's work for this one. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, fascinating and interesting and pretty invasive, I have to say. Mm, it is. Pretty invasive. And, uh, but, uh, you know. It's got to be done. It has to be done for that preservation, for the longevity of what people need to be preserved for a while. So thanks for watching guys. Thank you. Um, Thank you Tracy for yes. your knowledge as per usual. Ah, I'm learning myself every day with my environment too. So yeah. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you like, next time. Subscribe. More questions. Take care. Bye. Bye.